So our definition, a sequence is a function. And usually we use the letter F. I'm going to use the letter A instead of F. And it's going to go from the positive integers. So integers we write like uh, that bold Z. And then that plus means the positive ones. And the output or the range is going to be real numbers. And the first terms of a sequence. So you can write out this uh, sequence. If you write it in function notation, um, generally going to start at zero or one. So this would be the first uh, four terms. Uh, sometimes you start at zero, sometimes you start at one. Uh, you actually can start at any integer you want. If you start at like negative 72, it's a little bit silly. You should generally try to start at zero or one. So that's almost all the sequences I write down. They're going to start at zero or one. Uh, this is a bit, and of course it keeps going, <clears throat> this is a bit annoying to write down, so we're going to do a shortcut. Is we're going to write the, uh, you could, this is also, you could think of this as the uh, input, this little number here, the subscript, but we're going to call these indexes. I don't know how to pluralize that, but it's probably yes. All right, so those are the index. So we got zero, one, two, three, and we'll start out with an example. All right, the uh, first four terms. Of, and I'll use this subscript notation, you could still use function notation if that works better for you. So this a n is going to be negative 1 times 2 over n. I want the first four terms. And we'll start a 0. Uh, oop, I meant negative 1 to the n power right there. So you got negative 1 to the 0 power, which is 1. And we got 2 over 0. So this is undefined. Uh, so this sequence is not going to start at zero. So forget it. There is no zero term. We'll start at one. And negative one to the first is negative one times two. So our first term is negative two. Our second term, just looking up here, replacing n with two now. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 2 over 2 is positive 1. So our next term is 1, a 3. Negative 1 cubed. So negative 1 cubed is still negative 1. 2 times 2 thirds. So that's negative 2 thirds. And I want the first four terms. So our original term doesn't exist. So we're going to go. To the fourth term. Maybe one to the four, uh, to the fourth, two over four. So negative one to the fourth, four negatives make a positive. Two fourths is one half. Okay, so this are these are the first four terms of the sequence. It is generally uh, easy to turn. You can call this the formula for the nth term. So if we call this formula, and term, one there for the nth term. Okay. It's relatively easy to go from the formula to writing out the terms. That's not very impressive. It's really just making a table of values. You've been doing that for a long time. So this uh, type of example is not worth writing a, uh, a 
quiz or final question about. Uh, what we will look at, though, that is worth uh, considering is how to start with a list of terms and then how to write down or how to generate the formula that would give you those terms. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next few examples. Uh, and before actually, before we go into that, there's two base, two main types of uh, series. So we'll start out with an additive. Additive series, and the form of these, assuming we start at zero. Uh, let's see, what letter should I use for this? I can't use A, even though I want to. Let's use M. And actually, you will probably be happier if I write it in point slope form. All right, so this right here is an additive series. Now you might think, well, it looks like you're multiplying. It's definitely true, I am multiplying. Uh, but that multiplication has an additive effect. Uh, the m is the amount each term increases by. A zero is the initial uh, starting value or the initial term. All right, so that's an additive series. Let's look at an example of an additive series. term formula for the series. Let's do three, one, negative one, negative three, negative five. All right, this better be an additive series because I just described uh, what an additive series looks like, or the formula looks like. Let's examine this series and see if it's actually additive. What does it take to go from one term to the next? Well, to go from three to one. I subtract 2. To go from 1 to negative 1, I subtract 2. Subtract 2. Subtract 2. So the pattern is decrease by 2 each time. Or increase by negative 2, however you want to think of it. This is our slope right here. This is how much the terms change each time. They drop down by 2. All right, initial term. Initial term, well, that's that right there, three. So we're going to put this in the additive series notation. A n is going to be negative two n plus three. So I am done here. This is the uh, nth term formula. I want to just check really quickly. So let's just compute a couple a zero minus two times zero plus three equals three. So that's our initial three that's in the box. A one equals negative two times one plus three. And that's positive one. A two is negative four plus three is negative one. All right, so this is the easiest way to write down a additive uh, uh, sequence. I'm going to say the word series by accident. They do mean different things, and the next section will be using um, almost exclusively series. Uh, but for now, it doesn't really matter which word you use. Uh, and it will be clear when we write these down which of the two we're talking about. All right, so that's additive. Think about it like a line. If I plotted these points, if you took the uh, index as the x value, what would this graph look like? So we're going to start at x value of 0, 1, 2. So at 0, 
we have y or an output coordinate of three. At one, we have one. At two, we have negative one. I'm messing up all my wonderful labels. All right, so you could graph these out and this would form a line. Now, it would be incorrect to fill in the line because what we don't have, we don't get any of these points right here. There are no inputs between zero and one for sequences. So it would be incorrect to shade this, to draw this line here. So these are just the points, now that it keeps going. However, it doesn't keep going forever. I do need to stop. Uh, this series does end here at five. It doesn't go on, or I should say negative five. All right, so what term does our series end on? This example is pretty easy to just count up. Oh, I need five of these. So a three would be negative three, a four would be negative four. All right, let's put this together. So our sequence, you could write it as, let's see, I'll put the an, the actual an in here in a minute. So I just introduced some new notation. We do this curly brackets and outside the curly brackets, you have the starting value of zero. So n is the number that's gonna start at zero and then go up by one each time and it's going to stop at four. And of course, we just wrote down an was negative two n plus three. Okay, so that's the nth term for these five, uh, for this uh, sequence of five terms. Now, just a little bit of warning, when you look at the uh, what we just wrote down, it looks like there's four terms. However, you don't start at one in this particular sequence, you start at zero. So if you really count these up, there's a zero term, a one term, a two term, a three term, and a four term. So there's really five total. It's a little strange counting it uh, starting at zero, but if you think about it for a minute, it'll uh, you just get one more than it looks like you have. All right, let's uh, do what's called re-indexing. So what I'm going to do is, instead of starting at zero, I'm gonna start at one. And if I still want five terms, I better stop at five. Now, if I just copy this down, we're gonna have problems. They won't be equal. Why won't they be equal? Because I'll be creating uh, the terms one through five, not zero through four. How can I compensate for what I just did to n? So what I do to n, I basically increased it by one. So how do you compensate? You decrease it by one. So what I did here, so here I increase n, by one, I compensate in here by decreasing. And by one, now I could have increased it by 10 and decrease it by 10. I just did one because it's pretty easy to see. All right, so that's called re-indexing. You can move it up as much as you want. Just make sure you move it up by an integer. So you can move it up by five, by 10, by 112, or you can move it down by uh, any integer value as well. Just make sure you compensate inside the formula for whatever you do over here. All right, so that is re-indexing. Let's do a very similar problem but one that's very difficult to count terms for. So I'll start.
start with the same negative three, negative one, one. But let's end it on some, ooh, that negative's in the wrong spot. It should be positive one, negative one. Uh, let's go to negative, it has to be odd, 307. All right, you could try to count how many terms we need. Um, it's close to half of 307, but I don't want to be close. I want to be correct here. So we already wrote what the sequence is going to look like. So we got this minus two to the n plus three, and this term here is a zero, it's a one, a two. This one, I don't know which one is gonna be. So I'm gonna use a capital N, that'll be my final uh, index value. So I want a big N to equal negative 307. All right, I'm gonna solve for N. Oops, solve for big N. I'm using big N mainly because that's the uh, uh, standard variable uh, to use for the final index value. All right, how in the world do I solve for n? Well, first thing I'm going to get some nice, a uh, nice expression here. A n is negative two. Now, I have to be careful. It's big n I'm using. Two, negative two n plus three equals negative three o oh, seven. So I'm going to subtract three. So that's negative three ten. Now divide by negative two, which is something positive 155. All right, so our final index value is 155, and I can write that in here. There we go. You could count out 155 terms. Uh, however, if <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing that, you have way better things to do with your time. You know, if I maybe made this number huge, at some point it would become uh, incredibly time consuming to count out how many terms are in this series. Uh, but you can do a little algebra like we just did and figure out, ah, oh, the last index value is 155. So that is an additive sequence. And next, we're going to look at multiplicative sequence. And again, I want one quick warning here about additive. It looks multiplicative, but the additive sequence does have a multiplication inside of it. So now we're going to look at the multiplicative sequence. Multiplicative sequence. Use R. All right, so we are. We'll go with A zero times R to the n power. A zero is the initial. Term R is what we call the ratio. 